Okay, so what I'm going to be showing you guys today is how to create like a, a flat object, or almost like a little bit like a tile, that you would put on your totem, or it could be the totems that hang using string or rope. So I'm just going to use a cookie cutter shape to start with just to give us an idea. And I've rolled this out using the two sticks and the roller so that I, and I've flipped it back and forth just like we talked about so that it's nice and flat and, and a good thickness, not too thin. So I'm just going to cut this out right here. Okay. Lift. I have it a little bit up there. And then bring that out. So now I have my shape. It's good when you do it on this plastic because then you can kind of lift a little to separate so you have a nice surface. Okay. If I were doing this and adding texture or anything to it when it when it's supposed to be leather hard, I would probably let it stiffen up, but I'm still going to do the back while it's soft. Okay. So we'll talk about how you can do that. So the first thing I might do is just sponge that outside edge so our edge is good so it's soft I'm not dealing with that and then I'm going to have to create a couple of little bands that I'm going to strip across the back and I want to do two bands I'm going to use the same clay because uh, if you just do one wider one it might not be as stable so Two will be kind of stabilizing. So it's going to go over the back of this like this and like this. And we're going to put a little substrate in there so that the size is correct, right? So if we were doing it with just a rope or string, we probably could use this 3 8 inch dowel and that would be totally fine. And we could bring it right over here and I'm going to cut it off and show you guys how to score, slip, and blend it, right? And that would be fine for string. If you guys are doing the dowel and you're making a standing totem, then I would say go with something a little bit larger like this. This isn't quite as big as my other pieces of, of PVC pipe. Um, it's a little smaller, and I have one of these in the back that you guys could share. It's not a big deal. And this would be a great size for a final size that's a little closer to this, because remember the clay is going to shrink. So if you're doing kind of a standing totem, use this piece of PVC pipe. And I'll actually put a little bit of text on it. I'll put a Sharpie on it to say what it's for. And if you're doing a string, then you could use the smaller one, okay? So I'll use this as an example. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of shape it down so that I know, you know, where it's going to meet on the back of this tile piece. And then I'm not going to cut it here, but I'm just going to make a little mark and maybe I want it to follow the outside edge a little bit, but I want to make sure I have good contact. And then I'll bring it over here and cut it, and I'll bring it over here and cut it, okay? So that I know I'm going to have to put a little score slip and blend right here. I'm going to flatten this part out too. It's a little bit up. So with that in mind, I also have a little bit of an indent right here where I know I'm going to be meeting the back side of this. So I'm going to score it. And remember, when you're scoring, you want to really make sure you get into the clay enough so there's a good texture there. It almost feels like it's pulling it up just a little bit. And I'm going to do that on this side as well. And one other thing you want to think about before we put this together, again, is those sharp edges. So on the outside, I can smooth that after the fact, not a big deal. On the inside right here, it's going to be a little bit hard. So I'm going to go ahead and smooth that. Smooth this side so that on the inside, once it's kind of set, I don't have to worry about it. I'm going to place this back in place. I'm also going to take a little bit of water, or you can use slip, and put it in place here. Put it on this piece here. You don't need a ton, but something that kind of makes them adhere. Put it in the right direction. 
Okay. And then I want to be able to pull this out. I don't want to leave it there. So I'm going to just reset it just a little bit and smush it down just a little bit more. Okay. And then I'm just going to gently slide it out. It might seem like you want to leave it there, but you really don't. If you leave it there, um, it could get stuck. Remember, the clay is shrinking. Every day the clay is shrinking. So even tomorrow, it would be like, or it would crack where I had it. So I just want to do it like that. And I probably would do both in place. So let me actually do this right here. I'm going to just lift up one side for a sec. And do both so I have them in place. And I'll make a little mark on this. Make a little mark here. Take it off. Do all of the same steps so that I have two. For cutting, we do have those kind of dull X-Acto blades. And those are fine in the back. I actually really like the felting knives. I feel like they give you a nice cut. And then again, remember, you want to use this metal rib with the teeth to create your scoring. That's the best. You don't want to use a felting knife. You don't want to use a pin tool. This is faster, more efficient, and it works a little bit better. And again, I've got these both in place. I'm going to slide this out. They kind of came off, but that's okay. Put them back in place. Oh, I forgot a step. What did I forget? Smoothing that inside corner. There we go. And then we're going to place it back. It looks pretty good, lined up. You want to make sure that it's lined up top to bottom. They're not skewed. For this one, it's pretty obvious because my space is kind of small. It'd be hard to not have them lined up. But if you have a much larger surface, that might become a little more difficult. So you want to make sure that they're all lined up, okay? And then from here, we're going to blend. So with the blending, you could blend it right to the outside edge if you want to. You can blend it from the side here. You can smooth it out. This is a, a point when, you, when you're kind of combining two pieces of clay. You really want to take your time with the blend and make sure it's just the way you want it. You can, again, soften that outside edge later. I'm not so worried about that. Um, but the blending part of this is super important so that the clay, one piece, adheres to the other. Now, do you have to do that in every instance? No, there's instances where you don't. But with this, this is going to be a real strength thing, so it's going to be really important. Okay. And I would spend just a little more time on this, getting it just the way I want it to look, sponging, getting rid of my extra marks that were from scoring. Okay, and making it look pretty. Now, in the end, I could also soften this. Like if I didn't want it so sharp out here, I could soften this down a little bit. And I could carve it off a little bit, which would be fine. And I would want to leave this flat Again, not directly on a board, okay? You don't want to ever put clay directly on a board. You'd put a piece of plastic down, then put it on a board in between, right? And then let it stiffen up a little bit. And at that point, you could flip it over, and if you had anything to pattern or texturize or do inside that, you could do it then. But you'd want to wait until it stiffened up, okay? Any questions? It's all good? All right, cool.